like our reuse. So it's like waterreuse.org. So we have to reuse the water. Like, you know, you can't, like, there is uh, nothing like, uh, you know, you just reuse and throw. Everything has to be reused. Just now we are discussing at the uh, lunch, like, suppose 100 plates are there, what we are doing? Like, it has to go back and clean it, come back, you know, it can't throw out. Like, you know, there is no reserves in the nature which will be abundant. So, I requested actually the water reuse organization with, you know, with uh, Frank Avila and then we talked to their executive director and all that. So the guy Carpenter, uh, he is the past president of the water reuse, he agreed to come, but in the last minute there was uh, uh, some problems, so he couldn't make it. But again, uh, our great friend Dr. Amit Pramanik, he is also a uh, part of that water reuse organization. When uh, Pat Syncropy, the executive director, told hey, Sam, like, you know, um, you can I send uh, Dr. Pramanik? Then I told wait a minute, is it Amit Pramanik? Yeah. Yeah, he's already coming, like, you know, from WRF. Oh, he's also a water reuse guy. Then I told, oh, then there's no problem, the problem is solved. Because the water reuse is already represented by Dr. Amit Pramanik, too. Amitji, just with. Uh, no introduction required, he might have already, uh, with the WRF, he has already printed. Just with one phone call, he came on, again, supporting us, one of the great guys. So, to you. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> yeah, this is killing two birds with one stone, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing is, actually, the Water Reuse Association shares space. Uh, if you could get to the first slide, thank you. They actually uh, s share space in the same office as we are located. So it was just a matter of going down the hall and just having a chat with them and saying, I'll go, I'll get it done for you. So Guy Carpenter couldn't make it, uh, but I did get these slides from um, Carrie Capuco and Pat Sinecropi, who are at Water Reuse, so they're my colleagues over there. So I'm gonna speak to you some about something slightly different from what you heard uh, yesterday and today. Uh, this morning. So this is a totally different organization in a way. It's a trade association. Um, it's basically, in the U.S., it's the only trade association that's dedicated to advancing the laws, the policy, funding, and public acceptance of recycled water. That's their mission. Try to, uh, it is basically a coalition of utilities that recycle water businesses that support the development of recycled water projects and consumers of recycled water. So uh, in, ad in addition to being a national organization, Water Reuse also has um, Water Reuse Arizona, California, Colorado, uh, Florida, Nevada, Pacific Northwest, and Texas. These states are primarily the states which are not as water rich as the states in the Midwest that can rely on the Rocky Mountains as well as the Great Lakes, where there's plentiful of water. But water reuse is actually becoming bigger and bigger. Oh, if you can advance to the next slide, please. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, it, it, it's a trade association. It actually started in California. It's a, it is a very dry state. California actually gets a lot of its water from the Colorado uh, river, it comes from the Rocky Mountains, it gets transported almost a thousand miles. Um, so water in California is a very precious commodity. And California has gone through drought. Um, the most recent drought about five years ago was the worst drought in more than 500 years. So it is basically water uh, a scarce um, uh, state. So that's where it essentially started. It became a national organization in 2000 and it's become a more international uh, over the years because uh, water impacts almost everything here. And as of now, there are almost 500 um, organized uh, members um, that represent about five, 50 million utility customers. Okay, uh, next slide please. So why reuse, right? Because water is life. Every living thing on this planet, humans, animals, and plants need water to survive. But in addition to that, water is food. Every link in the food chain requires water. Whether you grow c 
carrots or coffee or chickens, the food that we eat and the drinks that we enjoy, we need water. We need thousands of gallons of water to produce just one pound of some produce or, or even coffee, for example. So uh, water nourishes the plants the, and produces the fruits and vegetables and so on and so forth. 92% of the water that's consumed every day is used to produce food. Just think about it, 90%. In some cases, it's even more. The water that we actually use for human purposes is a lot less. Um, water is power. Generating electricity requires water. 90% of the plants that power the U.S. homes and businesses, they need water to cool the turbines, gen generate electricity. The remaining 10% is used to uh, basically uh, uh, produce hydropower electricity. So anything that you think of that has to do with electricity needs water. So water is power. Water is also commerce. Any sort of manufacturing requires water. You want to produce an everyday uh, product like paper or plastic, we all need water. So even cotton and wool, turning that to fabric, you need water. So it's ubiquitous. You just need water. You just cannot afford not to uh, look at sustainable water resources. So communities in the U.S. are already starting to incorporate water reuse in their water management strategies. They can't just keep abstracting either from the groundwater or from surface water. So they need to start looking at other sources of water. And what better way than to have a renewable resource that comes out of the toilet every day? Most of the communities in the U.S., 75%, are sewered. So we get a ready source of the raw material needed to produce that. So yesterday I talked in Lyft how we are using this resource um, for other things um, like nutrients and energy and so on and so forth. Today I focus on water and that's what the Reuse Foundation is doing here. In the U.S. itself, by 2027, uh, the, the, the projection is that the volume of recycled water that we are producing will increase 37% uh, from today. So currently it's about 4.8 billion gallons per day. It will go up to $6.6 .6 billion per day. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, oh yeah, I spoke about this, wa all water, <laughs> uh, what is life. Uh, next one. Um, again, the f definition of water reuse or recycled water is the process of intentionally capturing wastewater, storm water, salt water, gray water, cleaning it up and using it as needed for a beneficial use here. So whether it's for drinking water or for agricultural water, industrial processes, that's recycled. So you're reusing that water. So that's the same the water that existed when the dinosaurs were drinking the water, it's the same water that we are drinking today. Next slide, please. So this is about why uh, communities are investing in reuse. That's because this helps build communities that are sustainable and stable. It makes it ready for families to flourish and for businesses to grow. In some communities, this recycled water becomes resilient and drought proof, and that's especially true in California. In other communities, water recycling projects pr uh, essentially protect the sensitive waterways and alleviate overburdened centralized treatment facilities. And so there, there's a lot of investment going on in this space. Uh, farmers have to grow food, they need water, um, the, the treated wastewater has nutrients that actually can provide the valuable, uh, I guess, the fertilizer that's needed to grow the crops here. Next slide, please. So you can see this map here in the U.S., how the infrastructure in the U.S. is changing. Um, Chicago, for example, invested more than 100 years ago in water infrastructure, in the pipes uh, that deliver, well, first take the water from the lake 
and then the uh, additional pipes, the collection system pipes, the sewers that take it away from homes. This is more than 100 years ago. Um, some other communities that are a little bit more modern, at least 50 years old. That infrastructure is aging. And the cost to replace that infrastructure is in the $20 trillion uh, of investments that are not going to be coming from public coffers. And so the communities have to step up. Uh, we talked about rates, I think, in the uh, earlier uh, session. Rates are going to go up. Water and sewer rates have to go up to keep up with that aging infrastructure. We don't want to rebuild it the same way that we had built it more than 100 years ago. We need to think for the future. And in the future, you want to be producing uh, enough for what you need and not more than enough. For example, in the US, water supply um, was basically for firefighting purposes. So we were producing very clean water for firefighting purposes, not primarily for drinking water purposes. But it's the same thing. It's, it's almost like you take a whole big gallon, uh, a 50 gallon jug of, uh, of clean water distillery water, for example, here, and you put it on top of a toilet and you flush it every time you use the toilet. It's, it's a waste. Uh, so you need to be very cost effective. You need to be thinking about all of this. And that's what Water Reese is trying to do. And that's why the, the infrastructure in the US is changing. Uh, recycled water is actually cost effective. It can be more cost effective than developing other alternate supplies. You know, we talked about uh, brackish water, uh, salt water, sea water, uh, trying to get fresh water out of those sources is quite challenging and expense, can be quite expensive. And so if you can reuse the wastewater, uh, it's probably going to be more cost effective in many cases, just significantly more cost effective. It's environmentally sound and it's safe. Uh, the water that's treated these days is better than drinking water quality. It is it's easily able to meet the most stringent state and federal water quality standards. Um, earlier, Shubhoja showed the uh, TDS of the ta uh, basin water here, and it was quite high. But in the US, you can just turn on a tap at the basin and you can drink it. Many communities can easily drink that water. There are certain communi uh, communities that have problems with lead and copper and the plumbing and piping and all, but for the most part, in general, Water is safe to drink in the US. It's reliable. Uh, wastewater is renewable, essentially. So you're going to be flushing the toilets in the centralized treatment system. So this is a sustainable source of fresh water. And it's locally controlled. Uh, the communities can actually use the water that they are generating. The wastewater that they're generating, they can renew that, clean that, and use it, uh, capture that for use in their neighborhoods. Next slide, please. This is just some examples of the, um, the uh, reuse, uh, the successes here in the US. Uh, for example, you know, six and a half billion gallons of recycled water is used in Idaho. Idaho is where a lot of potatoes are grown in the US. And 92% of the recycled water that Idaho produces is actually used to irrigate crops. It's beneficial because it helps keep 2,000 tons of nitrogen and 500 tons of phosphorus out of the Ohio rivers and streams. Um, water recycling is also important for very small decentralized communities. Uh, for example, the New England Patriots, they have a huge stadium called the Gillette Stadium in the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts. That NFL team basically pays the community $4 million a year um, to, ha to basically use the water, to reuse the water to, for the stadium and all the um, um, ancillary facilities that's needed there. So this really helps. So those are just examples of it. Next slide, please. So what does water reuse do? So water reuse basically does advocacy, as I mentioned, policy. They do they help support the states, that uh, the chapters that are there, the seven states that I mentioned. There is also communications, conferences, networking, and they have memberships. So individuals are also members of the organization here. Next slide. 
they have a lot of public education activities. So um, there's a lot of misinformation right now about um, water reuse projects. Um, and that in misinformation has created community resistance. So to address that challenge, the Reuse, the Reuse Association is basically doing much more in terms of the public communication efforts. Um, they basically have uh, YouTube videos, they have um, guidance documents, policy documents, and all. So basically helping educate both the public and policymakers about the benefits of reuse. Next slide, please. Um, this one talks about the research archive. So uh, the Water Reuse and the Water Research Foundation actually work together uh, on research uh, projects and that research uh, is then published. And so their research archives actually holds several kinds of uh, findings. One of, of course, the scientific uh, investigations which provide groundbreaking new science based on laboratory and on-site testings. There are white papers that explore policy, regulation, planning, and social science factors, decision-making tools that provide operators with guidelines and frameworks to improve outcomes, and additional communication tools to increase the public acceptance and engaging the communities on issues related to water. Next slide. And these are the advocacy-related ones. This may not be as relevant here in, in the Indian context, but the Reuse Foundation does advocate at the state and federal level on issues related to regulatory reform and funding needed for research and construction projects for reuse. Next slide. So this is just, again, US-centric. Um, in the US, local governments are responsible for supplying safe uh, and, and reliable uh, water uh, supplies and then the, these are funded for the most part with fees paid by the utility customers. But the cost in, uh, of operating and maintaining this has to come through rate payers, which is the public here. New capital improvement projects, they are either funded through bonds that are issued by the municipalities or low cost loans from the government uh, through the uh, state revolving funds, uh, through WIFIA, uh, there's other federal programs that are available for those. So the Water Reuse Association basically advocates for those uh, priorities here through a couple of the uh, um, uh, legislative acts here, Safe Drinking Water, Clean Water Act, and so on. Next slide. So this is again with the US Congress. We have a House of Representatives and we have the US Senate and there are three committees in, um, in the House. It's like the Congress, uh, there's the Energy and Commerce Committee, there's the Natural Resources Committee and the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. So it's actually quite fragmented in the US. Um, in the Senate, there has two committees, Energy, Natural Resources, Environment, Public Works. Uh, one of the lessons to be learned here uh, in, from the U.S. or the mistakes is uh, if you are uh, establishing a regulatory structure, have one for all of water that's irrespective of whether it's wastewater, drinking water, uh, storm water, uh, reuse water, so, and have a committee uh, in, in Congress that overlooks all of this instead of so many different committees. Next slide. Uh, a number of federal agencies are involved in water. Um, they include the uh, US EPA, the Bureau of Interior Reclamation, as well as various, um, the, within the states itself, uh, some of the states, especially the western states, so you can see California and all of that, which are the drier states. They also have um, some additional um, regulatory uh, powers here. And they work together with the Bureau of Reclamation. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just examples of a series of efforts coming from each of these um, state, uh, state chapters of reuse. So I'm not going to go into details. I'll just gloss over one slide at a time, and you can read them at your leisure because the slides will be made available. So you can just advance one at a time. Oh, so this one, just for a second. Uh, one thing that Water Reuse has done in partnership with the Water Research Foundation is to advocate for funding 
in water research. So the grant program, the federal National Priorities Research Grant Program, we are showing to Congress and the, the politicians that water priorities are important. It's a national priority. So we are putting it front and center. So all the water related agencies, associations, all come together to try to advocate for that. Next slide. Um, this is just how they are configured here. Many membership categories. The largest is the reuse related water utilities, reuse related businesses, and um, then there are all the individual memberships and so on. Uh, next slide. So these are the different uh, chapters. Um, there are nine organizations, it seems, that are active right now. Uh, I did mention California, but Arizona, another dry state. Florida, you think it's got a lot of water, but it does not. So uh, water reuse is big over there in the Pacific Northwest. And Texas, Texas is also pretty dry. In fact, some of the work on um, reuse uh, in terms of research is going on in Texas too. And then um, reuse also has conferences. So these are just uh, one, uh, the next annual symposium is in September. Um, it's uh, quite a good learning uh, opportunity here on the reuse aspects. Um, they also, next slide, offer a lot of networking, uh, either in the state or national level uh, and international. They have a job bank on their website. Uh, resumes are posted, jobs are, um, are essentially advertised. There's a member-only directory. Next slide. There are communication tools, so as a member, you'll have access to all these tools. Next slide. And this is something that just started very recently. Uh, Water Star. So this allows um, businesses and gov uh, government agencies, even commercial buildings, um, to to basically have this. Uh, it's basically a certification. Uh, they get to post this on their on their uh, websites or on their businesses here. Uh, or for example, a hotel that reuses uh, water. Um, I was actually uh, walking here just outside this morning, and I saw that the gardens here in this hotel are all. Um, basically irrigated by rainwater. So that's a form of reuse. They don't use any fresh water. That's really good. I mean, fresh tap water. <laughs> so they are using re re uh, rainwater. So things like that. this is like a certification program that, that they've sh just started. Next one. And again, with this uh, Water Star program, um, they can basically uh, join a conversation. It's basically a network. It's a community here. It's an online community. And they also get a weekly um, uh, newsletter that reports on the federal legislative uh, developments. There's registration, uh, there's webcasts that they do, it's free for them. And they get access to peer reviewed uh, research uh, and other member benefits. Next. Uh, this is just those categories for, for the reuse and membership here for the Water Users Network. Next one. And those are the stage sections. I think I've spoken about that too. And also, um, in each one of these are the different sections. So let's let's keep going. Next. 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 Again, this slide will be made available, so I don't want to take up too much time. So if we go to the next one. Yeah. That's it, and this is, oh, go back one slide, <laughs> thanks. So if you need more information, this is their website, waterreuse.org. Pat Sinacropi is the executive uh, director, I put their CEO, that's her email address, and Carrie Kapuko is their special project director. All right, that's it, any questions? Yes, Prakash.